I'm John Ashton, and we're in Nashville, Tennessee for the 2019 Tomato Arts Festival. This is What America Eats. Each year, a small corner of Nashville, Tennessee takes a break from its normal role as Music City to become Tomato City. What began nearly 16 years ago as a humble homage to this versatile fruit, the Tomato Art Fest has grown into one of Middle Tennessee's largest annual festivals, attracted well over 50,000 visitors. Though there are many fruits and veggies that are vital to southern cooking, the tomato is the guest of honour this weekend. To gain a better understanding of the festival's origins and why we're throwing a party for this famously red fruit, we spoke to the festival's organiser, Jack Davis, to enlighten us. Tomato Festival. Yep. Tell us about it. So this is the 16th year. Um, East Nashville Five Points. We essentially bring the community together around the tomato. It started as a simple art show in an art gallery and some of the restaurants and bars and eventually it led into the streets and now we've got 225 vendors and live music all day. What do you love most about the Tomato Art Fest? Um, I love that people come out and play. I think it's wonderful how people really go all out to dress up on a hot day like right. this because it's hot. Oh, yeah. I know the viewers can't feel it, but it's hot. It is very but they hot. dress up for this festival, yep. their passion for it. Why did they pick Tomato Festival when it could have been watermelon? Because watermelon's good at this time of the year. It is, but tomatoes are a uniter, not a divider. And we just felt like this was the best scenario to bring people together. He's certainly right. It's incredible to see a group of people this size united by celebrating something as simple as a tomato and since you can do so many things with a tomato the food offerings at this festival are vast to say the least we met with Kelly one of the many vendors here about bringing fresh tomatoes to East Nashville and while we were chatting we ended up talking to another person who's very important to the festival now you're selling a tomato salad well, they are heirloom tomatoes to be exact and they're all different varieties Cherokee purple Carolina gold German Johnson. This is a one time a year thing we do because this is the peak season for heirlooms and we serve them upright with some really great olive oil, fresh basil, all shipping on, and salt and pepper, good kosher salt. What makes you want to do this tomato salad? When I was working the information booth a number of years in a row, people kept asking where they could get fresh tomatoes, so we had the idea to do it out of boats and just serve it straight. People have been crazy about it. And what do you love about Tomato Fest? I love the freedom, everybody in costume, the music is always on point. My neighbors, we all call it the East Nashville Christmas because we see each other and everybody decorates their houses, dresses in costume, hugs each other. Happy Tomato Fest. You're the one who started the Tomato Fest? No, well, my husband and I did, yes. Now, why did you choose tomato? I'm Southern, but I probably am a bad Southerner because I hate the heat. And so we did tomatoes because tomatoes love the heat, and it's the only thing that gets me through the summer It's a tomato. And if I said tomato, would that be accepted? Yes. Let's try this, Meg. Feta cheese for saltiness. Is it? You got the, the tomatoes, which are beautifully ripe. It's so simple. Peasant food, but brilliant. Now, as much fun as it is to walk around the festival eating delicious food, I needed to get ready for a cooking demonstration. That's right, today I actually have to work. So I headed over to a booth set up by Oak Grove Farms to talk tomatoes, a classic southern dish, and maybe pick up a few for my demonstration. Zach Kendall, you own Oak Grove's farm. Yes. How long have you been coming to the Tomato Fest? This is our fifth year. I enjoy farming and just being outside. I could never have a desk job. And then my wife came along and I both had no loved. choice. Yeah, no choice. Yeah, no choice. <laughs> did you ever grow anything before you met I Zach? I didn't. I did not like being outside, and now I'm forced to be outside. Every and day. do you love it? I love it now. Now, you've got a wide variety. It's amazing. There's some that I haven't even seen. I'm doing a cooking demo today. I'm looking for that perfect 
Tennessee tomato. My personal favorite that we have today would be these pink ones right here. They're called a brandy wine. What do you love about this tomato? Um, they're probably the sweetest ones, and they're just less acidic. Just overall, I can't beat them. And I see you're frying some tomatoes. That's a southern thing, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yes. So first you cut them up, and then you put them in egg and flour. Yeah. And then back in the egg. Just dabbing it on there. How are yes. you doing? And then you fry them. That's it? That's all. Okay, so these are your legendary fried green tomatoes. Yes. So craggy and beautiful. Let's try this. And ranch, you say, is the best? It is the best. Mm. How is it? Is it mm. good? Yes. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you. I actually feel like I'm truly in the south now for <laughs> a right. fried green tomato. You've, you've done it all now. While I love the fried green tomato, what I was really after were the fresh ones. With my new sweet tomatoes in tow, it was time for some cooking of my own. I decided to make Spanish toast. That's as simple as it is delicious. Good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to be back in Nashville. I want to show you a recipe that if you're in Spain, the Catalan folks, this is something that they'll make. In America, we're always used to making bruschetta, and bruschetta is a delicious dish. In Catalan, what they will do is they grow a special variety of tomato to actually just rub on the bread. Always when you're cutting a French bread, cut it in half. Two ways you can do is come across it, or you can stand it up, take some olive oil, your finger over, or you can get one of them fancy pourers, just to give the bread a slight coating. And we've got a pan on medium high, and what we're looking for is to toast the bread. The next step, what we want to do is rub garlic on it, and this is the game changer. When it comes off, you want to rub it with garlic. Now, you want to make sure this is hot when you're doing this. If it's cooled down, the garlic's going to be too spicy. I think a lot of people, one of the mistakes they make is they forget when they make a sandwich. The first thing to touch your tongue is the bread. So I always season the bread. In Spain, when they make this, they just take the tomato and they'll just slice it in half and they'll just rub it on. But in America, the skins are much thicker than what they are in Spain. So what we want to do is take your good old box grater and just grate the tomato. Most of the flavor in the tomato is where the seeds are. And you'll see that we've got this beautiful pulp. When we try this, it's gonna be quite acidic. I wanna balance it with more fruitiness. So I wanna take some extra virgin olive oil, about a tablespoon or two. Some salt goes in there and a small amount of pepper. A lot of people have a tendency to throw the basil stems away. You can use these as a brush and the flavor that comes from the actual basil stems are amazing. I haven't got a whisk because I'm a traveling chef, so I'm just going to use the basil just to whisk it up nicely. So now what we want to do is take the bread, spoon the tomatoes on, and this is how they do it in Spain. I'm going to chop these into pieces. I need someone who's just lovely to come up and try it. Now tell us your honest thoughts. Simple as it can be. Bread, mm. tomatoes, olive fresh, oil. Fresh, very fresh. And then I'll bring some out to you. You can all have a free sample. How are you, mate? Hey, chef. Looking you? good, lad. Thank you very have much. Have a try this. Yes, it's a sir. Spanish tomato toast, grated tomato. Really simple, as simple as it can be. Come on Thank down. You. One may not consider the humble tomato a powerful force of unity, but after spending some time at this festival, I believe I've been swayed. Folks from a myriad of different backgrounds and walks of life come out to East Nashville year after year to celebrate the tomato, putting any differences they may have aside. It makes me wonder if we should replace the olive branch as a symbol of peace with a tomato vine. That's all for this year's Tomato Art Festival. Until next time, I'm John Ashton. We'll see you soon.